Paul Kiker. It's 2024. It is. Happy New Year. Happy New Year <laughs> and good New Year. Let's have a good New Year. I started something yesterday and we're going to show a picture of it. And this is, um, I've decided that no matter what kind of crappy, crapola day you have, you choose one thing today, every single day, that's a positive and a good. Yes. And you talk about it. So I want to talk about the sunset yesterday. Mm. Did you see the sunset? No, I got home after sunset. Man, oh man, <laughs> oh man. I was coming through Nelson, Georgia, and I just glanced. Well, actually, let me start over. I was at, is it Harmony? Harmony Daycare, where Zana stays, okay. mm -hmm. and I was there, and we were coming out of the parking lot, and I just glanced at the sky, and it was drop-dead gorgeous, and I just pulled over, and Ansley thought something was wrong with my car, because I just pull <laughs> over, you know, and, and I'm taking pictures of this beautiful sunset, and I thought, well, I don't care what kind of day you've had, that's a good way to end the day. God painted the sky it for was our enjoyment. beautiful so I left there I was it was at 515 and I came down refuge and I thought I'll go the back way so I'll go through Nelson and I get over there and I glance up and there's this amazing orange sky and I'm like wow wow why in the winter are the sunsets prettier what, what is it about that? You're the genius. <laughs> That's outside my realm of knowledge. <laughs> what is it in the atmosphere? <laughs> I don't know, but it's I sure enjoy it. It's beautiful. Them. It is. It is beautiful. It is. And I was like, oh, well, the funny thing is, I'm the dummy that has chosen our new hours. And for you old timers, and some of y'all are out there who remember, we used to be live 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., <clears throat> We did that that way because all of my co-hosts had other jobs. We all did the show, and then we all had other jobs that we went to. And so it worked well to do it early in the morning, and I would say, have your second cup of coffee with us, uh, and I would talk about Bob and Evelyn Blackstone, and I would say, Bob, you finish your oatmeal, because every day, every day, that precious, precious man sat there eating his oatmeal with us <laughs> every day. And he said, I love that you're on when I'm having breakfast. So I thought y'all might like to be on with us and have breakfast with us. We don't have anything to eat. I don't have any oatmeal. We don't even have any coffee. We gotta do better than this. We do need to do some coffee. Yeah, we will, <laughs> on, on a commercial break, I will go get us some coffee. <laughs> but, but I just think the early morning is great. Well, mm -hmm. I chased a sunrise. You dummy, you dummy. I listen to the news and they tell me what time the sun is going to rise. <laughs> they lied. I sat there 17 minutes waiting on the sunrise. It's cold, it's miserable. It was cold this morning. And I'm waiting 17 minutes on the sunrise. Well, the sunrise finally comes up and it was beautiful, but not as beautiful as the sunset. Mm -hmm. So because I had a 23 average in science in Grady High School, I did not do well in science. Can y'all tell that? <laughs> 23 average, hated the class, didn't like the teacher would not learn from her because she taught with a boa constrictor it, she had a boa constrictor in the class every day I'm terrified of snakes I wanted to wrap <laughs> it around her I wanted to cram it down her throat couldn't <laughs> stand it didn't like science so I went to my counselor and I said Ms. Overton would you please give me home economics again today I want two home ec classes she said well you need science I said no I don't I'm never going to use science <laughs> Y'all have read my cookbooks. You've done my recipes. Did I need science? No, I can cook anything. Can I measure? No. <laughs> no. And if that's part of science, I'm sorry that I didn't pass that class. I did get my little diploma and I did, you know, get by. But, but honestly, um, science was never my thing. So when you ask about a sunrise, a sunset, I don't know. <laughs> now, and, and you said something about a trillion, and I thought, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did pretty good in math. I, I did good in math because I really liked my coach, who was my basketball coach, mm -hmm. and my math teacher. Really liked him. So I did good in math. But, but when I think about a trillion, I don't know what a trillion is. I know that we're in debt trillions. We're in debt trillions. We are. Yeah, we are. trillions. <laughs> trillions. And to put that in perspective, 
four years ago, our national debt hit 24 trillion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two years ago, we hit 30 trillion. Mm -hmm. Three months ago, we hit 34 trillion. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, three months ago, we hit 33 trillion. Mm -hmm. And today we hit 34 trillion, mm -hmm. or this week. Now to yeah. put it in perspective, that's what we were talking about. I'm like, how in the world do you explain yeah. what a trillion dollars Especially is? Especially to the, a dummy like me. <laughs> just the, the size <coughs> of those numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So a trillion seconds. Mm -hmm. Seconds, which seconds. is like this. A yeah. trillion seconds equals 31,546 years. A that's older seconds. than me. That's old. <laughs> That's older than You're me. nowhere close to that. <laughs> nowhere close to that. I'm getting there. <laughs> but I mean, it just puts it in perspective. That just is how, crazy, Paul. That is crazy. Irresponsible we're being with our national debt. Irresponsible. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, all this fiscal stimulus is, yeah. is driving economic data. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we are the leaders that are in power, this administration, and you guys know I'm a political atheist. I'm not an atheist because I believe... Christ died on the cross for my sins, and he is my only hope for salvation. But politically, I'm an atheist. I'm yep. an equal opportunity yep. basher. Yep. So yep. if you're far right or far left, I can upset both of those people equally. Yeah, yeah. But, um, um, you know, we are sacrificing our future for short-term bragging rights. And, it, and it's just a, a, a testament to how weak our nation mm -hmm. has become and our leaders. Yeah. You know, they don't have the strength <coughs> to, to dig in and take the heat from a long-term standpoint. And they want to give everybody instant gratification today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we're going to suffer. With so. no consequences. <coughs> no, no consequences. Well, I had asked you before we came on the air, um, I, th I think a lot about the people in my past. Mm -hmm. And there are people who <laughs> greatly influenced me. There are people who totally changed me. And there are people that I would love to have been more like. And, and I think about, um, we were talking about daycare the other day. And, and if y'all hear that I'm in jail, well, I'm probably in jail because <laughs> I've, I've, I've gotten tired of the state system and how they do not help single moms working six-day jobs and trying to take care of a child who hasn't gotten any food stamps, it will be 11 months, 11 months, they're eligible, they should get it. I've called the governor's <coughs> office over and over and over and over, and the governor's office says, we will put high priority on this and we will pass it through to so-and-so. High priority means nothing, nothing. No, and I doesn't. told the lady I talked to last week, I said, ma'am, I said, you don't understand. I said, I've talked to several mothers in the area, in our viewing area, because everybody thinks I can solve every problem because I'm mm -hmm. Sherry Martin. And I hear this all the time, well, you can fix it, you can help us, you can do this. So I'm dumb enough to reach out to the governor's office and try to help single moms. Okay, one of them is working for $14 an hour, six days a week, and paying $165 a week in daycare. Yes. Okay. When I was a single mom working at the Woodbridge Inn and the townhouse and cleaning three houses, okay, those are my three jobs. I'm, I'm doing those three jobs. God bless Mrs. McIntyre. Mrs. McIntyre <laughs> kept kids. She kept my first child for $10 a week. And then normally it would be another $10 when Dawn came along. She said, because you're trying so hard, and you don't have any help, I'm just gonna charge you $5 a week. Now, with this, this woman, this precious sainted woman, sat with a bowl, I can see the bowl, I'm probably <laughs> gonna cry, I can see the bowl with stewed potatoes in it, and I can tell you the seven kids sitting in a circle at her house, and she would feed one a bite, and one a bite, and one a bite out of the big bowl. She was an amazing cook. She was an amazing lady. She taught them discipline. She taught them to play in the dirt. She did everything. I was working three jobs, two normal <coughs> jobs and cleaning three houses. I got $12.50 to clean Hazel and Everett Mosley's three bedroom, <laughs> two and a half bath, brick home, $12.50. I was thrilled to get that $12.50. Mm -hmm. 
it was a different world. I appreciated everything I had. My rent was $80 a month. I bought my first home and my house, my rent went from $80 a month to the house payment was $726.40 a month. Seven twenty six forty. <laughs> That's a big deal. It was thirteen and three quarters yeah. interest. Be a lot easier for young families to get started if they could find a place in, uh, in that payment range. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't it? It would. But but if you <laughs> are looking, if you get behind somebody in Walmart like I did one day, and you see somebody with an EBT card, who looks like she just stepped out of Broadway, and she has the new iPhone fourteen, and she has mm -hmm. on those shoes that have the the red soles that are so expensive, and you see her spend $845 on an EBT card, but you know that there are single working moms in the counties that we serve mm -hmm. who have not gotten their food stamps since last March, since last March. Eligible, completely, completely eligible, and trying to keep food on the table for their children. Mm -hmm. Now, if you hear that I've done something crazy, like knock somebody's lights out, <laughs> probably the truth, because I'm so fed up with it. Yeah. I'm so fed up. When, when you talk these numbers, I've seen so much abuse in government. Oh, yeah. I've Billions. I've seen so much seen in waste overseas. in government, yep. but yep. I have seen <laughs> single moms, not lazy single moms, mm -hmm. single moms who've gone through the drug court, who are clean, who are working, who are doing a great job with being a mom. I've seen single families where there's a dad who's in charge of the family. Mm -hmm. He can't get help. I mean, the crap that's going on in America will make you fight and mad. You know I don't drink. Not I don't drink right. at all. Mm -hmm. I don't drink at all, and there's a reason. <laughs> if I did, I'd be in so much trouble. But, but, you know, I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I've watched it. I've called the governor's office. I've been calling the governor's office since last March, since last March. And I told her, I said, ma'am, I said, I'm going to go on TV and talk about this. Yeah. Because this, we've gone to three counties, three defects offices, couldn't get in the door because they're locked, because they're underfunded. I mean, underfunded, understaffed. They're not underfunded, they're understaffed. Three different offices from Murray, Gilmer, Pickens. Okay, <coughs> those counties, there are single moms working every day, some of them working two jobs, some of them, one of them's working two jobs and getting a college education. Good for And her. a single mom, getting no help from the state. But then I get behind somebody in Walmart with an EBT card and she spends $845 and I'm ready to knock her lights out. And if the Bible lady wasn't around, I'd have probably <laughs> knocked her lights out. The, the, Bible, Bible lady. the Bible lady has to talk me out of things. <laughs> but the system's broken. It is. The system is broken. We know that even you and Holly, two parents working, it's a whole lot harder to put food, <coughs> food on the table. It's a whole lot harder to, to do the things you need to do just to get your kids back and forth to school because gas prices went crazy. Yeah. It's a whole lot harder for a complete working family, but you take a single mom or a single dad trying to raise their children getting no help from the government, and then you get behind the bimbo at Walmart who buys all the high-priced shrimp and lobster and all this crap. Mm -hmm. And I am, I was so angry. And, and, and the Bible lady has stopped me quite a few times <laughs> from doing something I might regret, but she also said she signed my bond. So, <laughs> so, Look around the world. Right. Look around the world. <clears throat> we have to fix it. Mm -hmm. We have to fix it because we're never going to get Miss McIntyre back. We're never going to no. get $10 a week daycare. Um, I can't even imagine the cost of insuring a daycare center. So I understand why no, the I prices mean, are what they are. The government regulations, I mean, think back to that period of time. Yeah, Ms. McIntyre <laughs> was sitting there with a bowl feeding seven kids. So Today she could, she'd go to jail. She, she didn't have to have an inspected kitchen. No, she no, didn't have to have, no, no. you know, all of these things and certain government regulations and pay yep. for certain insurance. And, you know, we, we, we live in so much fear, yeah. right? That, that you have to over-insure. That we beg the government to come in and regulate, which mm -hmm. over insures, and mm -hmm. then you've got all kinds of, of penalties and you know, you're, you're out of business completely, so they punish any entrepreneur that wants to go in. Sure. And you know, unless it's family, 
you know, I don't know that system because our kids are old enough now, but right. but I know from uh, from other people that, that I have in my life that have younger children right now, unless you have family to help you, You're in trouble. it's ridiculously um, it's hard. expensive to be able to care for your kids. Well, I did tell the lady at the <laughs> governor's office, and, and I've always, y'all know how I vote. I mean, you'd, be, you'd have to be blind, deaf, dumb, and a few <laughs> other things to not know how I vote. I'm a true conservative Christian. Mm -hmm. um, I would have voted for John Kennedy were he alive today. I really liked him. I really liked his policies. I liked him. I loved Reagan. I loved so many things about our past and previous government. I don't like the government anymore. No. I don't like the government anymore. <laughs> I don't like that I can sit at home and watch them throw away gazillions. Mm -hmm. is, it, is a gazillion real? Is gazillion a real number? I think number, a gazillion is a real it number, it but it works, right? <laughs> yeah. It works. It helps people understand. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can just watch the waste, <laughs> and, and we see it all the time when, when, when a bill gets passed, mm -hmm. and 79 pages down, <coughs> you're reading and you find that they funded some god-awful something in some place that you've never heard of in your life, and they gave them $5 million, you know. Yeah. And, and they you're go, going, what? Well, not only that, you know, I've not done a lot of research, but I am hearing it from, one of the things I pay attention to if something's true is both sides are reporting it. So you've, mm -hmm. got, you've got the left that's talking about <coughs> the immigration yep. crisis at the border, you know, and there's rumors that they're giving them $5,000, putting them on planes and sending them That's all over what the place. got me started last week when I called the yeah. governor's office back again. Yeah. That's exactly what got me started because I saw that they are not only coming across the border, they're getting medical, they're getting an EBT mm -hmm. card. They are set to go. They get on a bus and get to go to Chicago. Yeah. I actually looked it up. Gazillion is not a number. Gazillion so, is not okay, really number. It's what it we made up. <laughs> Thank you for looking it up. I thought it was more of a metaphorical term <laughs> yeah, than anything. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, when you take that, I mean, here's, here's the thing. Weak men lead to hard times. Hard times create, lead to good men. So when you think about that, it's like, okay, what is good? A good, a good person, good man, that's the quote, so we'll go a good person. Right. If you have a good woman in your life, She's going to challenge you if you're making bad decisions, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the Bible tells us we're supposed to be salt and light. So if you pour salt on no wound, it doesn't hurt. Right. So if we have a wound in our country and you put salt on it, yeah, it's going to cause a lot of problems. And I think that's one area that the church specifically has, has failed this generation is because it's like, okay, let's just ignore it. It'll go away. Oh, yeah. We're going to oh, pray yeah. about it. But, but they're not speaking out and speaking into the lives of. So when you've mm -hmm. got weak leaders in charge, weak means they let their emotions rule them. Yep. yep. They care more about how I look right now yep. than the legacy that I leave. Yep. And, and you think about this. So you've got all these immigrants that are coming across. And, it, and if they're true, you know, if you look at it from a couple of uh, different perspectives it's like okay what's refugees. going on yeah they're refugees yeah. right but most of these are most of everything that i have seen have been young <coughs> men of military Single age men. without families yeah, yeah. right <laughs> yeah there's businesses that's porting their mm -hmm. luggage across mm -hmm. so they they take good photos and backpacks but they've traveled uh, untold miles you know undetermined miles that i can come up with but and then you give them this money and you put them into the in, in these certain cities that are going to go ahead and let them vote mm -hmm. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to vote more benefits for them sure. at the expense of the working class. Out of so your pocket, out of your pocket, out of my pocket, out of these boys' <laughs> pockets. When we think about yeah. everybody here works, and, right. and almost all of us do two jobs, you know. Right. And <clears throat> did the government send you anything last week? No, they take a lot. Did they me. ask you, did you need an EBT card? No, but no. they tell me what I can say and can't say or yeah. try to. Yeah, right. yeah. So. yeah. I mean, the government's got it. It's bass ackards. <laughs> right. you know? Well, and that's that pendulum that swings, and, and, and hopefully we, we've had enough. You know, you take Argentina has been uh, implementing these policies for quite some time, but Malay, I think that's, I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, I've been kind of paying attention. It's one of those interesting things where he speaks Spanish, so it's not English. You have to read the subtitle, which mm -hmm. is a lot more work to do. But there's dramatic changes that are taking place in Argentina right now. And... And we're seeing it good in or other, bad. Good. 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 Right. I mean, basically, on the first day that he came in an office, 
he did away with 12 government agencies, he if I remember correctly. He promised he would. He I promised guess, he would, yeah, and yeah. he did. Yeah. And there'll be a little Imagine bit of... Imagine a politician making a promise that they keep. I know. There'll be a little <laughs> short-term chaos because of all yeah. this taking place, but they're going back to the free economy. They're going back to allowing entrepreneurs. We're in a situation right now that, you know, if you're, if you're corporate, you have more connections and more influence to, to gain the system for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. So we've got a military industrial complex, right? You've got a military, uh, you know, a, a health industrial complex. And, and I think people are finally starting to see because we're, su we're reaping the seeds, you know, the fruit of horrible seeds that are coming about. And I think people are finally starting to wake up because I think what it was maybe six or seven years ago, I told you, I said, I don't think things are going to get better because I don't think the American people have had enough yet. Yeah. And I think. Well, let the, me tell you, brother, I've had enough. Yeah. I have More had people are enough, enough and yeah. I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just done. I, I'm done. Yeah. We need to help the ones that deserve the help and throw them others to the side. Yeah. It's craziness. Well, and, and you need to be, we need to be strategic in the way we, we move about this. One, we've got to communicate directly to our leaders, our elected officials. We have to communicate because to they them. they don't listen to us. They lie to us. They're the biggest liars ever between a pair of shoes. But still, <laughs> they're liars. even if they do, we still have to attempt to speak to them. Because they're only they're going to listen to the loudest voices, and then you surround people, you find people that are like-minded, and to speak in a wise manner, right? Mm -hmm. And then you vote, and then also vote with your pocketbook, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the major media channels, people watch them because it's habit, but they're not getting good information. So right. find something else, you know. Right. Support your support your local businesses. Start uh, speaking out and and voting with your pocketbook. I yeah. mean it. It takes work for us to do that, yep. <clears throat> but think about what our founding fathers went to went through, and the sacrifices that they made to lay the foundation for our country. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, we're at the point now that we're not going to have to put our lives on the line. We just have to put our convenience and our and our you know spare time on the line a little mm -hmm. bit to where we have to work for that. If we don't do that now then one of the generations behind us is going to have to put their life on the line in an attempt to bring back the same foundation that made this country great sure. again. Are you surprised that over the holidays, and, and not to bring any bad vibes, <laughs> are you surprised that over the holidays America wasn't challenged or attacked on our own country, on our own soil? Because there's so much unrest <coughs> in the world today mm -hmm. and there's so much craziness. When you have United States Congress women, and I can't mm -hmm. stand those women, when you have them supporting people who are murderers, then we have a problem. We have a real problem. And I'm surprised. I was, I was shocked. I mean, I wouldn't have gone to any event over the New Year's in, in any major city because I truly believe that we opened those borders, coming out of Texas and coming across that border in Texas are not just hungry people looking for a place. There are terrorists who have crossed that border. Mm -hmm. The border has documented terrorists mm -hmm. are now in our country. They didn't come here for lunch. No. They came here to seek and destroy and we let them in there. Have you seen the little um, saying that says, if we're going to use electricity wisely, let's start by building an electric fence at the border? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah let's, let's build an electric fence because um, they have documented that we have now terrorists that we just said, welcome in, mm -hmm. welcome in. Let us give you a welcome goodie bag. <laughs> And we probably, you know, they got an EBT card and they got, um, I'm sure they got Medicaid and they got a bus ride to New York City. Right. So they were already there set in place. I don't know when or what, but the terrorists didn't just come here because they liked the climate. They came here to attack us. Well, I mean, this is going to sound a little controversial in the statement that I'll make, but that's not politically expedient right now. Mm. Okay. So there are a couple of ways to look at that. One, if you go back to September 11th and the attack that occurred there, our economy was coming out of a bubble and we were already starting to deteriorate economically. So if you're, if you're another country and you want to strike the U.S. and you want to deliver 
as much damage as you possibly can. You need to wait until the economy. Now we're slowing, mm -hmm. but, it, but nowhere near like anybody anticipated before, right? So this mm -hmm. fiscal stimulus has been enough to keep the economic numbers up. It's been enough spending at the expense of our future to keep things going. So mm -hmm. let's say we get a Goldilocks scenario right now. One, you're not gonna get a great outcome for an attack like that, right? If you wait till we're already close to tipping off into a recession and you deliver an attack like that, we're then it keeps, it keeps people yeah. from spending, it further mm -hmm. accelerates mm -hmm. that. Furthermore, I mean, you've got an administration that is literally you know, come on, come on, we'll give you money. Everybody come over here, come in yeah. here. We're gonna give you free voting. We're gonna take care of you. You're gonna yeah. have jobs. You're gonna have all of this. So why would you do something to upset the apple cart true. with this administration? Yeah, now, true. Had, if we had the opposite party in here, I think that, that it would be just a little bit different. But I'm not anticipating, I mean, anything can happen, right? Um, I was just nervous, I just, I just felt like it was such a, <clears throat> it, was, it was almost an angry climate going on before the holidays, right. during the holidays. There was a lot of anger, a lot of protest, and I was worried. I was like, something's yeah. going to happen. I'm, I'm just, I'm worried. So, so and I I'm was a worrier. Too, I mean, when you get older, you'll worry too. No, I still do. <laughs> I mean, you know, at the same time, it was like when we went down to the bowl game to, to did watch Georgia Tech. Did y'all go to we Miami? Did. We went, uh, we went no, to Tampa. You went to Tampa, that's we right. We went to Tampa to, to watch ta uh, Tech. That's Georgia right. Tech. That's right. The, I forget that you got, a, you, got you, you got you an engineer. <laughs> yes, I do. And he actually dressed. He got on punt return team. Yay. So, so he was a red shirt this year. Yay. And he got to dress and got in three plays, I think. So Yay. we were there to see it. I was so excited about it. Yay. But I did think about that. I mean, I was very cognizant mm -hmm. of my surroundings. I was watching people. I was paying attention. Yeah. You know, to, I like to watch people anyway, but I was watching people intently. Yeah. And um, Speaking of watching people, have you been to a mall lately? We actually went to a mall down there because one of the kids was trying to find a last-minute gift. Okay. Because because I used to go to Town Center Mall every Saturday. It was I used religion. To love Town Center, every yeah. Saturday it was the religion. We went to Town Center. We ate at Ruby Tuesdays. We had our little day plan. Mm -hmm. And the last time I went, it wasn't normal. I didn't feel safe the last time I it went. It wasn't. It it was like gangster type not normal and I was like holy cow yeah. so I haven't been back I haven't been back in maybe seven years mm -hmm. because at that last trip went to Macy's me and the Bible lady went to Macy's and I just said I don't feel comfortable in here anymore mm -hmm. and that's really weird because I spent every Saturday pushing a baby stroller shopping eating that was our day and felt like it was it was comfortable it was safe mm -hmm. I, didn't feel that way again. So maybe that's why people shop online so much. Now, I want to ask you, we're talking about waste and spending in government, which yes. we've seen tons and tons of. During COVID, <coughs> boy, I'm going to get in so much trouble over this one. <laughs> uh, don't matter. You know, Go at it. What you going to do, kill me? Um, during COVID, there were excuses made for people not working. Right. And everybody had an excuse. Well, you know the COVID. Well, you know the COVID. Yes, COVID was horrible. COVID did terrible things. <coughs> COVID took some of my best friends. But, but, when it came down to that loan, was it a PPL loan? Is that PP, what you call it? Like PPP loan? I can't yeah, remember yeah, exactly yeah. what that Anyway, was. that loan was to help all businesses who suffered during that time. Right. It's a non-payback loan. They loan it to you, but then you sign off on it and you don't right. pay it back. It was a grant. It was a grant, yes. Where do grants come from? Well, come from individuals, come from governments, Your come from pocket, businesses. Your pocket, my pocket. Oh, yeah, Everybody's yeah, yeah. pocket. If it comes from the government, it comes out of our, our taxpayer pocket. It comes dollars. out of our pocket. Or our children's future earnings. Exactly. I would rather, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that a lot of small businesses got that money. I'm glad that people who struggled, because as a realtor, I can tell you, wasn't nobody much in the mood to buy a house at first, and then they got in a mood to get out of where they lived and right. come here. And so housing boomed, and it went crazy. But there are other places. I can remember walking into Cumming, Georgia. The Bible lady and I went to an Applebee's. It was crazy, y'all. It was dark, and they had like six tables opened up, and they were three tables apart. 
And I looked at her and I said, there's nobody in here but us. And then two more families came in. And I said, how weird is this? They put the fear of God in us because we were terrified of COVID and we did lose friends from COVID. Yes. I understand all that. But at the same time, the restaurants were really, really struggling because people were still nervous. I don't think we're back to normal yet. If I go in somewhere and sit down, I look around who's sitting by me and like you and I have both been sick lately. I've coughed and hacked and sneezed mm -hmm. and, and I've been careful about who I've had here because I didn't want, I, I don't, I'm not, I start to say I'm not infectious, but I'm not contagious, <laughs> right, I'm not contagious. contagious. But I have an infectious laugh. That's <laughs> but, <laughs> you do. But when, when I look at what COVID did, there were, I know of 20 businesses that I helped apply for that loan, mm -hmm. that they were justified in getting it. Some mm -hmm. of them were beauticians that you can't, nobody could go to That's right, government shop. shuts it down. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah. You, you go back and think about it, they shut down small businesses, but yeah. if you're Walmart or you're somebody else, oh, yeah. you can still stay open. Oh, yeah. It was a complete double standard. Yeah, yeah. And one has to question whether this was, uh, you know, government, corporate influenced, overreach to to if they can knock out control. if they can control. knock out if they can knock out five competitors in a small town that's more profit for it that'll be pulled out of our local community to go somewhere else yeah well and and the beauticians took a hard hit the restaurants yeah. took a hard hit um, there were so many small businesses that depended on that mom and pop walking in the door hey how you doing da 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 Everybody was nervous. Everybody was right. a nervous wreck. Now, lately, and, and I don't know if you know it, but this weekend, a couple of Pickens County churches were shut down because of COVID is I coming heard back. I heard that this morning, actually. And, and so there are still a lot of things going on, and I do try to be cautious, and I have checked my temperature. I've had no temperature mm -hmm. through all this craziness I've been dealing with, but I felt really weird, nervous about it. Now my hair has started that thinning again, which really makes me crazy. And I'm doing super vitamins and I'm trying to do everything mm -hmm. to stay healthy. But I don't want to be shut down for any no. reason. If, if I can just come here and be with y'all and if we do some reruns and we do stuff like that, I don't want to let them lock the door on us again. I don't want to not, not go get a haircut. I don't want to not be able to go sit down in a restaurant. I want my normal life back. Right. I right. want it back. And if you choose to wear a mask and you choose to stay at home and, and I just choose to kind of distance, but let's get our life back. Oh, Holly was so worried because now look, I'm, I'm big on, on freedom of choice. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Okay. And I do not judge somebody for wearing a mask. But don't force me to wear a mask. Yeah, I'm not wearing a I mask. I don't look down on somebody for wearing a mask, and I don't want to be looked down on not for not wearing a mask, right? Right, right. But uh, when, when we heard, because, you know, we heard mask mandates were returning in September, people got out and started talking to their politicians. I mean, I made calls to, to the school system where my wife did, and, um, you know, and they stopped it. Mm -hmm. But just in case I ordered, because I knew we had a couple of flights coming up, and I got this, Holly's like, I am not going to sit by you on the plane, because Holly's non-confrontational. <laughs> yeah, you got a weird one. I, I don't like confrontation, <laughs> but I will not I back can't down wait to hear what your mask was. It says, uh, this mask is as is, uh, is useless as the idiots that force us to wear it. Yes, I love that. And it was big, true, right? So like, true. I was going to wear that all the way yeah, through the so airport. Yeah, so true. And yeah. I had a couple of others that which, which yeah. were much worse yeah. than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean... You know, I mean, and that's, that's the, it's tragic that we gave in to so much fear. We and did. don't get me wrong, there, I mean, I know people that I cared about oh, who that died, we lost. That died yeah. from either the COVID or the remdesivir or the treatment on the other side yeah. of it, right? Yeah. There, there's yeah. all kinds of evidence, you know, that the, yeah. they died as I know a somebody right COVID. now who has a blood clot <coughs> and, um, that's still happening. That's the real deal. There are people struggling and facing blood clots and some of the blood clots, they don't make it. Um, and then they trace the evidence of the blood clot from the shot. Right. Well, and that's another thing that, that I had an issue with was, you know, and this was the decision that I made at the time. I had no more information than this. But when Trump made the comment, he got up there and he said, uh, there's a liability ban to protect all of the companies against any consequences from side effects of, of the vaccine and we're right. going to roll this out. That's the moment that right. I decided yeah. 
my hands and, 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 you know, my life is in the Lord's hands. I'm putting my faith there. And I told Holly and the kids, I said, this is my decision because of this. And the reason mm -hmm. is, I've been, 25 years now I've been on Wall Street, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The only thing that corporate companies understand is money and consequences. So mm -hmm. if they have consequences to their actions, potential loss of profit, potential mm -hmm. loss of, of a company, then they're gonna be much more careful about what they do, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the reason these big class action lawsuits are the only thing that tends to stop these companies right. from doing things that are harmful for individuals. So I said, now we're removing their only barrier to profitability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the government was gonna force that down. And how many billions of dollars did they make? Oh how much my gosh, did the I pharmaceuticals don't know. It was make? ridiculous amount. And, of and at the same time, at the same time, you and I have a dear, dear friend who, um, a class action lawsuit cost him everything he ever worked for and ever had. Right. And um, it was a class action lawsuit that never should have been brought, that was frivolous, that um, a jury took everything he had. Right. And and I said, you know, when, when we hear about things like that, and this was not a slacker, this was a worker, this was somebody who had, who had worked all of his life to build his wealth. And it was taken because of a class action lawsuit that the mm -hmm. individuals, by the time they got through paying the attorneys, I think they got nine dollars and forty something cents a piece or something ridiculous. Yeah, well, the attorneys. But it made destroyed all the money. him. Right. It totally destroyed him. <clears throat> and that's America's broken. Mm -hmm. America's broken. Our our government, our society, our our way of doing things. And and if you hear that I'm calling the governor's office again today, I'm calling the governor's office again today. Because when, when I have single moms telling me, you know, I'm making it, but we can barely survive. Right. I'm making it, but we can barely survive. And then I get behind the bimbo with the EBT card. That was like war for me. That was like war. Right. And, and I said, we have to step up and protect. This is our country. When you and I are gone, our children don't have anybody who's going to protect us. You know? No, there, hopefully. there's not a generation coming up that's like my granny. There's not a generation coming up that's like your granny. There's no. nobody coming up. But who's going to do I, it? I will say this: at some point in the future, we're going to suffer the consequences of all the foolish decisions that our later leaders have made. And you know, and unfortunately, a lot of this falls on the baby boomer generation because mm -hmm. because if you look back historically, they have retained control. Right now, I'm not saying the whole baby boomer generation's bad. I'm just saying that the baby boomer generation has been in control with these it's career. It's kind of a me first career politician. It's narcissism, is what it is. Me, it's me, me first. Me, me, me. Um, All about me. We've had new technologies that have come along, and uh, but I go back to that. You go out like if you read the Bible front to back. You know, I mean, I remember the first time I read the Bible front to back. I was like, man, I was so arrogant. I was a lot younger. And uh, I was like, these Israelites are a bunch of idiots, right? Like, I mean, the Lord just blessed you from yeah. turning. Yeah. You turned from your wicked ways. You turned to him. You followed his precepts. And one of the things that I tell my kids is the biblical rules, the, rule, the guidelines that God sets around us, is not to keep us from having fun. It's, it's to help us to live a fulfilled life where, like the Bible says, with the righteous, you know, their life continues to, to rise like the rising sun, mm -hmm. ever brighter in the future. So if you, follow those, if you follow those laws and regulations and rules, you will have a better life, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so they go through these ups and downs, and I'm like, okay, they're blessed, they're doing good. Through the tough times, good leaders have emerged right mm -hmm. now a good leader will do this a good leader is going to do what's right regardless of their emotions and that's one of the things that I really like on the booster club board that I'm with I mean there's conversations there there are men and women on there that'll do what's right regardless of what their emotions are in the mm -hmm. interim period mm -hmm. because it's the it's for the program weak men are the most dangerous that are out there oh yeah because they're insecure they care about themselves mm -hmm. And if, Only themselves. If they can line their own pockets mm -hmm. at the expense of someone else, That's all that matters. They're going to do it. If they can game the system for their own profitability, mm -hmm. 
they're going to do it. Why? Mm -hmm. Because then they're going to go to all their neighbors going to look how rich I am. Look, I am. I've got look, yeah. how many houses I've yeah. got. Look at my Instagram post. Mm -hmm. That's the narcissism that comes in. So it's not just, you know, to, to put some explanation to what weak individuals are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, a weak a parent or uncle or friend will be jealous of their their kid's success or their daughter's mm -hmm. success, mm -hmm. right? Because they need to be, they need to be needed. They need to be wanted. So it's it seems like it's a much lonelier path if you choose to walk, you know, choose to pursue good. But that's what brings about the best benefits for society. That's how we leave a greater inheritance to mm -hmm. our children and our children behind us. And <clears throat> you know, one of the things that Holly and I've talked about from time to time is what's the greatest inheritance that I can leave my children. Because wisdom, but, but it's wisdom, wisdom, because wisdom will stand the test of time. Money will fail you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Money will fail you. <clears throat> Our country worships money. There was a time where, where we feared God, but now we worship money. And I can, I can prove that because who do we celebrate? The most successful individuals, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be like that. What's our government's answer to a crisis? Let's give everybody a bunch of money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not protecting our freedoms, you know, protecting free speech. It's not disciplining kids in the school system. It's, it's money, 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 and that's what we worship in this country, and that money is going to fail us at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, <clears throat> we're going to take a commercial break in just a minute, but I want to show you some pictures because I was listening to a psychologist, and he said the downfall of the world <coughs> is social media. And if oh, I'm not right. on Facebook one day, then people call me and say, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> well, I kind of took a little bit of a break. I scan every night, and last night I was deleting a bunch of pictures, and I was deleting a bunch of stuff, and I was going through, and I was like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, and I'm t getting rid of stuff. So I think that maybe getting rid of this some hours a day mm -hmm. is beneficial to us, but... At the same time, I'm going to tell you, if I didn't have this, y'all wouldn't get to see what you're about to see because you're going to get to see baby Zanna yesterday. You're going to get to see this beautiful sunset yesterday. So we're going to show some photos now that this is this morning. This is this baby getting ready for daycare. Now look at that. She's just all laid back. Uh, and she's ready to go. Precious. And she's got on her new kitty shirt that her nanny got her. <coughs> and she's ready to go. Now this, this is the sunset yesterday. And it was just magnificent. And I thought every single day, I don't care what kind of day you're having, choose one thing to focus on. What was amazing about that day? Mm -hmm. So yesterday, I have two things to be amazed about. Zanna was so precious, so good, so sweet. And the beautiful sunset. And so every day this year, I'm going to challenge you to put a jar in your house. Everybody's doing this. And today, write down what was the most beneficial thing that you saw or, or witnessed today. Maybe it was somebody else doing something nice for you <coughs> as you stepped out of Walmart. Maybe it was, you know, just some silly little something. But, but it, is, it is of goodness to you. That's the first shot that I saw yesterday, and that was over Harmony Elementary School. And it was just beautiful. And I just thought, you know, Lord, this is a really pretty sky. Where did this come from? How did we get it? Well, science did it, but since I had a 23 average, I don't know how we got it. So, <laughs> so it's pretty amazing. Now, this, y'all, this, look at that face. She oh, I love lemons. lemons. I do, too. She loves lemons, and we pick her up from daycare, and she sits there and eats the lemon out of my teacup. And she just loves it. And I said, all I can tell you is she's mine because I'm a lemon addict. But look at that, baby. Now, now there's my joy for the day. I mean, what we all have something to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. And even if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, man, why did this happen to me? There's a precious, precious family here in Gilmer County that I love. Now, this is one of my favorite shots of me and Christy. Christy made me a grandmother when I was very, very young. I'll just say that. And um, I love to read to Christy, and I still send her books today. She loves to read today. So spend time with your grandchildren reading to them. And this is the last photo we have of all of us together before Angela left us. And, and I think about that a lot because things have changed so much. And uh, Tori's in Alaska now, and the girls are grown. And 
it's just, it's crazy. So enjoy every moment today because today your moments may be very different tomorrow. Now this is, that's Zanna staying in her bed. And let me tell you, the little child got her foot caught in those rails and I'm a nervous breakdown. Now look at that. <laughs> is that not a reason to smile? It is. Is that not just a reason to smile? She's just happy and good, and, and this is the wheels on the bus and the baby shark song. And she <laughs> loves it. She loves it. She loves it. She loves it. So we, we have to find joy even in the worst possible things that are happening. We are seeing some craziness in our country, but we have a choice to, to enjoy a moment, enjoy the day, enjoy something in this world today and make, you know, get, get a reason to smile. And this is these precious kids that I got to spend time with at the Woodbridge General Store. We made baby pizzas. I made them a warm banana pudding and we just had a really good time. They love pineapple. I had some of the best pineapple. And all the kids were just so sweet and so good. Those girls um, live in Florida and they were up for a holiday and these kids are local and and we just had a we had a good time and and i can tell you they had an appetite because i went with plenty of stuff and i thought we're going to have plenty no these kids ate like uh, lumberjacks <laughs> <laughs> they ate like lumberjacks and uh, it was it was just fun and uh, i appreciate the kids being there and uh, there's tim and we actually had baby noah was there that was first outing we had seen her at and uh, it was just a fun day so get out over the holidays, um, school goes back, I think, on Monday to most, most schools, but spend this weekend with your grandchildren. Do a little bit of cooking and a little bit of time in the kitchen. You will learn some patience. They will learn some valuable lessons, and I hope that you'll share that with them. We're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, I hate to tell you, but you've got about 10 minutes to wrap up <laughs> what we're going to talk about, so here we go. <laughs> Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I grown up, grown up, grown up, up every is way, in every way, guarantee you. You're my grown up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown up, and you know I care. Cause it's you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. City stuff. 
Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay. All right. Let's wrap up. What's, what's happening right now? Why are you the man you are today? Oh, gosh. That's a, that's a good question. I, I was thinking about that because you'd asked me before, you know, kind of who were the greatest influences in my life. And the uh, people who kept you from being somebody. Kept me from being somebody. Uh, I would say people influenced me, but, but I'll, I'm going to share them and then I'm going to come back to a moment in my life that I think I chose out of desperation. So, the first great influence on my life was a, a high school coach mm -hmm. by the name of Coach Hamp Alexander. And uh, I'll never forget, he called me in his office and he sat me down and he was like, you know, you, you can be a key player for me. He said, but you choke under pressure. Wow. And, uh, wow, I yeah. can't imagine telling you that. He did. And, wow. and he was right, I did. So, <coughs> so one of the things I tried to teach my kids because he taught me this was when I made a mistake, in basketball because I lean towards perfectionism. I expect perfectionism, mm -hmm. right? And that's a hard balance because there's a lot of people out there that expect perfectionism. You're not going to achieve it, mm -hmm. but I also think it's foolish not to strive for it, right? Because if you don't reach for the stars, you're never going to have a chance to get there. Right. Um, but he sat me down and he said, uh, he said, you know, you're, you, could, you could be a great competitor. He said, when I get done with you, if you'll follow my lead, when I get done with you, you'll have ice water running through your veins. I love it. Well, what he didn't know before that was I was the top ranked um, uh, slalom skier in the nation in the junior boys division. Went down to West Palm Beach, Florida, and they said, up, up next is Paul Kicker mm -hmm. from Elijah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I placed dead last. I chose. <laughs> I mean, I went, I went from like, I, I literally said in my mind, I was like, you know what? When I get done, they're going to know it's Kiker and LJ. <laughs> And yeah. uh, I placed dead last. Wow. I choked. Like, I just got overwhelmed. Wow. So fast forward to years later, um, I had to fight for the chance to be on the world collegiate uh, ski team because mm -hmm. I had quit. I'd left skiing for about four years, came back. I think my first year, if I remember correctly, my first year back, I placed in the top five in the nation. So I had no history like everybody else did. And they're like, hey, we would really like you to be on the team. Mm -hmm because we know that you qualify, but we don't have enough backstory. So they asked, said, you know, if we put you on the team, can you, uh, w will you win? Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah. I can't tell you that I'll win, but I'll tell you about this guy by the name of Coach Alexander that taught me this. So yeah. when I did win, he's the first person I thought of. The second influence that I had was my father-in-law. My father-in-law is obstinate, mm -hmm. um, combative, ridiculously opinionated. Mm -hmm. But he's the first person that pushed me to the point one time, or family that had pushed me to the point that we had a knockdown drag out to the point that my mother in law. Your father in law? My father in law, yeah. Wow. We, we had a knockdown drag out <coughs> at our house one year. And, and, and he was so kind of disrespecting me at the time that, uh, that I was like, all right, I'm getting ready to throw him out of my house. Like, I'm sitting there kind of praying out loud, can I throw him out of the house, you know? And about that time, I think Holly and my mother-in-law realized, and they were like, come here, come here, come here. And Judy was like, Bill, sit down, sit down. And I went on the back porch, and I calmed down for a few minutes, and I said, that's fine. But I just went in the house and went to bed. So we woke up the next morning, and he gets a cup of coffee, and he comes in because they're staying with us. He says, hey, I was a little bit of a jerk last night. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Wow. And I said, you know what? I was disrespectful to you last night because you were a jerk. Uh -huh. 
um, uh -huh. will you forgive me? Wow. And he said yes. And I, and I thought, you know what? Families should have the ability to fight, yeah. to forgive each other, to yeah. love, and go on. Yep. And so, so those are two great influences. My father-in-law taught me about family. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Hamm Alexander taught me how to perform under pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and he had the courage to sit down and tell me, you can be better. Yeah. Right? And it hurt my feelings big time. But, but if he hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have been yeah. a better individual. But I'll tell you the, the moment in my life. So we, we had moved back to LJ. We were trying to build the business. Uh, Holly was at home with the kids. We were so broke that I did not know how we were going to feed ourselves. Living in a double wide? Yeah, we were. Mm -hmm. On, you know, uh, uh, the family let me put it on, on family property. Uh -huh. So that was a huge benefit. I think our expenses, it was like $400 a month is what it mm -hmm. cost for me to be there. And I don't know what led to the moment. I can't remember now. But I was so distraught, so worried, so knew that I, that I wanted to be a better man for my kids, right, for my wife, mm -hmm. um, that I made my mind up that I was going to run. I was going to run. I was either going to have a heart attack or collapse. So I ran as fast as I could run for about two miles. And I can tell you the spot that I, that I collapsed. When I hit the ground, I just said, Lord, I don't want to live this way. I don't want to live with all this. I just don't want to live this way. I want a better future for me. I want a better future for my kids. You're the only thing that I know to trust. Mm -hmm. So I prayed. I said, Lord, you know, I choose to give you my life and for you to do whatever it is that you see fit for me. Take away anything that you want to take away to turn me into the man that you created me to be. Mm -hmm. Now, in this life, I'll never reach that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this, when, because we all do this, it's like, oh, I wish I'd have done this, and I wish I'd have done that, and why did this happen to me, and why did that happen to me? Now, now from the outside, you know, I, I always hate to share this, because I, the Lord's blessed my hand a lot. Mm -hmm. He's blessed the raising of our kids. But at the same time, that put me on a journey where I set, set my, I don't know if I set or he called me, he put me in a position where I got there, and I said, here's my life. I trust you with it do whatever you see fit. So when I look back through my life and some of the horrible things that have occurred, mm -hmm. some of the major battles that I've dealt with, I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. Because all of those events have brought me to the place that I am today. Mm -hmm. Now, cut me off at a four-way stop, there is nothing Christian or godly <laughs> about me. And, uh, but, so I am saved by God's grace. I will never reach that. But I'm grateful that the Lord heard that prayer and that somehow I was dumb enough uh, to be able to, in faith, put that out there. And I think the Lord took over. Mm -hmm. Because I look back at our kids, we raised them all three differently. And Holly and I were talking about that the other and, night. And see, I was going to ask you that because your children are very different. They're insanely different. Yeah. And we raised them all different. Mm -hmm. Like Kel's like, you were the meanest thing on the face of the earth. I never had a phone. Katie was like, you didn't let me do this. And... And Will's, you know, and they're like, you let Will do anything. Will's the golden child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, but y'all don't understand, Will. By then you were wore out and tired, and you're just like, oh, God, <laughs> well, let me survive this one. And I think there's a lot of it, too. You know, it was like I'd get in Will's face. He'd be like, sorry, Dan. And Kel would never apologize, yeah, right? So yeah, it was like, yeah. and, you know, and I just told the kids, I said, you have to trust that whatever's going on at the time, that the Lord wanted us to raise you that way so that you could be, you know, pointed in the path that's mm -hmm. for you. So I don't, so the thing is, is, you know, I was telling Holly, I don't, we read books that influenced us like How to Train Up a Child. It was an unbelievable book. It set our mm -hmm. mind in the right direction. But I don't think you can get through this life in the right way or be anywhere close to as good as we can be if you're not handing your life over the Lord and saying, okay, this is me. I'm weak. Mm -hmm. I'm broken. I am a sinner. I will destroy everybody in my life. Mm -hmm if you don't help me, mm -hmm. if you don't guide me. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the only reason that there's been any good in my life is yep. I believe because of that prayer. And you know what time it is? I used up all our time. Yeah, I love Sorry. it. I love it. And, and I know that I hope that this has touched you all today because um, we were brutally honest with everything. And, and that's the truth. I mean, life is what it is. It is not easy. It is tough. If you're a single mom out there and you're having trouble getting food stamps, pick up the phone, call me. I'll make a call for you to the governor's office because I'm just about fed up. 
You know, we just, we want everybody to have everything that they deserve and we get tired of seeing people get everything that they really don't deserve. So, so today, get you a jar, find one really cool thing about today and put it in the jar and then at the end of the year we're going to discuss all these things. Thank you for being here today. Thank you this for morning. making this early morning schedule <laughs> work and we're going to do it again. Yes. Tomorrow is going to be a throwback day and you will be very surprised at where I've chosen to throw it back and uh, it's going to be very interesting but um, yeah tomorrow's a throwback day. I will see you again soon, only on ETC. Don't forget, check out our YouTube channel. We have lots of programs. Every program we've ever done is somewhere in YouTube. So check it out. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.